So here's part two of graphs of equations. So in the first video, we went over how to graph making table values and also how to find x and y intercepts. All right. And the third key component to understanding what a graph looks like is symmetry. So there's three types, and we're mainly going to focus on the second two, but in this video, I'll go over all three. So you have symmetry over the x-axis, and there's no picture provided, but you know, something that would have symmetry over the x-axis could maybe be like a circle shifted to the right or maybe like a sideways parabola, which is something you don't see often because it's not a function, but there are equations out there that, you know, could graph a sideways parabola. So that would be something that would have symmetry over the x-axis. And it's said to have symmetry if for every x, comma y point, there's an identical point not identical, but a point kind of like that goes with it, a paired point that's x comma negative y, meaning that another point has the same exact x value, but the opposite y value, all right? And then for even functions, that means it has y-axis symmetry. So something like this graph over on the bottom left, where there's a point here, maybe it's like 2 comma 0, and then there's this point over here that would be like negative 2 comma 0. So for every point x, y, there's a negative x, y. Come on. Boom. Meaning, you know, for every point, there's a point that has the same y value but opposite x value. All right, and if, if you plot all those points, it would have symmetry over the y-axis, meaning you could fold it right over this y-axis and the graphs would overlap. All right, in function notation, which we haven't learned yet, it's going to look like this, and we'll go over it again later, but that means if you plug in a value for x, you get f of x, and if you plug in the opposite value for x, you'll get the same value for f of x. All right, and odd, when you think odd, it's like opposite. If you plug in the opposite value for x, you'll get the y value to be the opposite. So for every point x comma y, maybe like up here, like let's say this point is a 3 comma 2, there's another point out there on the graph that there's a negative 3 comma negative 2, where the x and y are opposite. So if that's true for every point x, y, that there is a paired point negative x, negative y, then the function is odd. All right, and we'll look at some graphs and look at how to prove this with algebra. So, how to test for even symmetry first? So, y-axis symmetry. So, to represent the point x comma y, I'm just going to use the given equation, all right? So, sometimes help if you haven't done so already to solve for x, but use the given equation. Then, you take that equation and you plug in a point negative x comma y. So, you don't actually plug anything in for y, but you replace x with negative x and then try to simplify it and if they come out to be the same then the function is even and it has y-axis symmetry alright so you might that's a lot to throw at you but when I give you an example it'll make more sense but you might want to reference these steps when you're doing these types of problems alright so something like this um, so for every point on this graph, f of x equals x to the fourth plus the absolute value of x minus two, you know, you're gonna have a y value. So this function represents x comma y. Right, for every x that you plug in here, you're gonna get a y value in this whole form. All right, now let's plug in negative x in for x and watch what happens. So you get negative x to the fourth plus the absolute value of negative x minus 2. Now here's the key step. You look for even exponents, which is why it's called an even function, and also absolute values, and those are going to turn negative x's into positive x's. So like negative x to the fourth is going to equal positive x to the fourth. Think about like 2 to the fourth is 16, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16, also, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is 16. So they're going to be equal. Same thing, the absolute value of x is equal to the absolute value of negative x. Then minus 2. Alright, and notice how we were able to simplify f of negative x down to 
be the same exact thing as the original function. All right, so when you plug in negative x in for x and get the same exact function as the original function, it's even. All right, now even has a lot to do with even exponents. When you have an even exponent, it's going to turn a negative input into a positive, in, you know, a positive output. But just because all of the exponents are odd, like in this example, number two, you got a three, a one, and a five, doesn't mean that this function is odd. All right. So let's do the same method we did in one to number two and see what happens. So you're, you're going to test even and odd symmetry the same way every time. You're going to start off by plugging in negative x in for x. So you get negative x cubed minus negative x over negative x to the fifth. So because the numerator is an odd function, like all the exponents are odd, and the denominator is an odd function, it's like you're dividing an odd number by an odd number. And actually it's not like that at all. But what's going to happen is in the top, you get this negative x cubed, which is going to be negative x cubed, and then negative negative x, which is a plus x, over negative x to the fifth. Now, if you factor out a negative 1 in the numerator, so now you have, no, I'm going to rewrite this over here. So I kind of ran out of room. All right, so factor out a negative 1 in the numerator, and you're left with positive x cubed minus x, and factor out a negative 1 in the denominator. Those are going to cancel out. Boom. And you're left with this, which is exactly like the original function, which means this is even as well. All right, so to check for even or odd, you plug in negative x in for x, look for either even exponents or absolute values, which will turn negative x into positive x, and odd exponents, which will keep, you know, keep the negative sign, and then simplify it down. If you get the same equation as the original, it's an even function. All right, and just to give this a different look, the second example of why, even though all the exponents are odd, why they come out to be even. Um, if we rewrite this like this, x to the third over x to the fifth minus x over x to the fifth, then using our exponent rules, that's going to become 1 over x squared minus 1 over x to the fourth. So when you simplify it like that, you notice that, all right, all of these exponents with our variables are even. So if we were to plug negative x in for x here, you'll see that it would you know, stay the same as the original. All right. Now, how to test for x-axis symmetry. So it's the same as y-axis symmetry, but instead of plugging in negative x in for x, we're going to plug in negative y in for y. So this right here, we know from the first part of the video, is going to be a circle. All right, so a circle could have x-axis symmetry, and we'll look at the graph of it in a second. But let's check for it algebraically first by plugging in negative x in, sorry, plugging in negative y in for y. All right, so this becomes x plus 3 squared, and then negative y squared is going to become plus y squared. And see, we have the same exact equation as we did here. So, that means for every point x comma y, when we plugged in negative y in for y, we got the same exact equation, which means there's a, there's a point x comma negative y for every point x comma y, which means it's odd. All right? Actually, that's not true. I'm sorry. It does not mean it's odd. That's my bad. Odd and x-axis symmetry are totally different. It just means it has x-axis symmetry. All right? Sorry about that. So let's look at the graph of it real quick. 
So if we open up our calculator, and I'm just going to go to an, if you went to a new doc, I already have this from the last video, but if you hit, go to a new doc, hit menu, um, graph entry edit, and then equation, ah, darn it, you go graph entry edit, equation, and then circle, that's how you get your equation to circle pulled up. Alright, but we already have one here, so we want to graph this one, which is x minus 3 plus y squared equals 16. So we'll put a 0 right here and a 4 right there. And you see this has x-axis symmetry. If you were to fold this graph over the x-axis, it would overlap with the other half of the graph. So like for every point x, y, so like this point right here, which is... 3, comma, 4. There's a point down here, 3, comma, negative 4. All right? So for every point x, y, there's an x, comma, negative y. All right? So that's x-axis symmetry right here. Boop. All right. Lastly, let's look at odd functions. See how much life do I got? 17 minutes. Challenge accepted. All right. How to check if a function is odd? Now we're going to plug in negative x in for x, and if you get the opposite equation, so think odd opposite, and it's useful to factor out negative one to show that a function's opposite, then the function is odd. Alright, so we got this number 3 right here. We're going to plug in negative x in for x, and now we're looking for an opposite equation. Alright, so we did that. Now we're going to try to simplify. So 2 times negative x to the 5th is going to become negative 2x to the 5th. And then negative 4 times negative x is going to be positive 4. And now, we could just factor out a negative 1, and we get negative 1 times 2x to the 5th minus 4. See, that part of the equation is exactly like the original, but now we have a negative 1 out in front, which means when we plug in negative x, we're going to get negative y. So, for every point x comma y, there's a point we plug in negative x and we got negative y therefore that means that this function right here is odd alright and notice how all the x it wasn't a rational equation and all the x's had exponents of that were odd alright but number four here we don't get opposites if you plug in negative x in for x Now you get negative x cubed plus 5. And if we were to factor out a negative 1 now, you'd get y is equal to negative 1 times x cubed minus 5. But the original equation was x cubed plus 5. So this function is not odd. All right, and let's just quickly graph these two. So I'm going to pause this and graph the two so we can see um, what the equation of odd function, what the graph of an odd function looks like, and one that is an odd. Alright, so here's the graph of both of them. So in blue, we got the function that was odd. You can see that, you know, for every point on the graph, so like for example, this point right here, which looks to be, not exactly, but about 1 comma negative 2.5, there's a point on there that is the same numbers but opposite signs negative 1 comma 2.5 so what it means another thing you'll see from odd functions is that if you were to rotate this blue graph 180 degrees it would look exactly the same right, it kind of looks like the letter N and the letter N has 180 degree rotational symmetry so um, that's something to look for when you're looking for graphs of odd functions but in the red graph, that was a function we got that wasn't odd. Um, you see that for every point.
point on there, x, y, there's not an identical, you know, a paired point with it that was negative x, negative y. And if you were to rotate that graph around the origin, 180 degrees, it would go from this point being above the origin, this y-intercept. And if you rotate 180 degrees, it would look something like this. It wouldn't, like, overlap on itself. All right, unlike this graph, where if you rotate 180 degrees, it would look exactly the same. All right. All right, so that's even and odd symmetry. I'm going to make another video just about equations of circles. All right, so thank you for watching.